Today, I'm going to show you different ways you can customize your cursor and even add cool animations and interactions like this. Oh, and hey, I'd like to mention this video's sponsor, Skillshare.com. Now, it's a brand new year here in 2019, and Skillshare will help keep you learning and thriving as they offer 25,000 different classes in coding, design, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my tutorial that might affect the user experience, so you could watch this full course on user experience at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with a subscription that only costs 10 bucks a month, but if you're one of the first 500 of my subscribers to click the link below here in the description, you get the first two months free. So take advantage. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of course, Cetro. So today we're going to talk about customizing the cursor. And there's several different ways to go about doing this. You can, there's a pure CSS only solution. And then we can also do it through JavaScript. We're going to take a look at both. All right. So I just going back to our example real quick, um, we can see we actually have the cursor here, but we have just a different element following it with a click event that we're going to add. Um, we can also completely get rid of the cursor itself as well. So I'm going to explain all of this here going forward. So for today's question, customizing the cursor, yes or no? Uh, tell me why in the comments, why or why not. If you think there's a use case for it or not, let me know in the comments. I'll let you know my thoughts. Uh, and the first pinned comment, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and let's get started. All right, so we're here in Visual Studio Code, free code editor from Microsoft that I use, very popular. Um, and I'm also in a folder called Cursor, and it's empty. So I just created this and then opened it up in here. Um, as always, I'm gonna start with an index.html just for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm gonna hit exclamation point for some quick boilerplate HTML. I'm gonna hit link, enter, and then make it the uh, the location here of the href attribute to CSS folder and a file called main.css. Um, we'll do that real quick, CSS main.sass. So you'll need the sass uh, extension right over here. Just type, type in sass um, right here, live sass compiler and install that. Um, and then we will click watch sass right there. Um, and then yeah, that's all we need to get started here. I'm not going to put any HTML for now because uh, it's just going to use the body element for this. Um, also, you want to install the live server uh, extension as well. So type in live server over here um, and you can see I already have this one installed right there. All right. So once you have that installed, right click open with live server and it'll open up your default browser with uh, our blank page 127.0.0.1. All right, so I was going to situate things a little bit over here. Yeah, something like right around there is good. So now we can see the browser. All right, so I, if you want to basically change the cursor in the most simple way possible, you can do this uh, just through CSS, a single CSS property, of course, called cursor. So we'll place it on the body element. All right, I'm going to uh, control plus just to get this a little bit bigger. Control B to get rid of the sidebar. And I'm going to type in first uh, margin zero. I don't want any margins if I decide to style it. It's, it's a default thing I do. <laughs> I don't even need to do it for this tutorial. Um, I'm going to put height. We do need to do this, a height, 100 uh, viewport height. Um, and because if we don't do this, the cursor won't work, the custom cursor. Um, so now we could put in cursor property and we can, it has a lot of different values. Um, you could see if we type in cursor, we have all these options um, right here. Although I'm not sure if those are them, but I, we could choose cell for instance. And there we go. You can see the cursor is now changed to a cell. So let me show you, um, there's a good code pen example that shows you all of them in use along with their corresponding values. So if I come here, And you look at the cursors of CSS and you just uh, hover over default, default, none, help, pointer, progress. There's a lot of different ones. Some that you can recognize, they're just basic ones. Um, but of course, if you wanna do custom, then you're gonna need to use the URL property. All right, so this would be in the case that you have like an SVG graphic that you wanna change the cursor to. So we're gonna put in URL and we'll put in images and then custom.svg. All right, so I'm going to save this, hit control B to get our sidebar out. And I'm going to open this up in Explorer real quickly. And 
I'm going to put in um, and just paste in a, a basic uh, image graphic here real quickly. I'm going to create images here and just paste in this logo.svg graphic. And um, I'll, I'll include this in the code pen um, and uh, probably zip it up even so you can download the whole thing. Um, to just use any custom or SVG graphic, just note the size though. The size is important that you choose. You don't want to choose something too big because uh, as far as I know, in terms of scaling the cursor property, it won't work. Um, so whatever the size of the SVG is, that's what you're stuck with or PNG or whatever. Uh, so keep that in mind. You don't want to go too, too much larger than like 30 pixels or 40 pixels. Uh, so here's what this will look like. Uh, if we come back to our document here, and we have uh, our images logo.svg. Oops, that's the wrong one. Make sure I put this in right. Delete that. Oh, and this won't work, by the way, if you don't have an element uh, or an additional property here, just with a comma and auto. Uh, and this basically just is like kind of like a fallback if it doesn't exist, but it won't work if you don't add it. So now that we've added it, as you can see, this is the SVG icon. It's just. It's stupid in my, my opinion, but you can use it in this fashion. Um, the way you get the most control though um, with this, uh, with, with custom cursors is through JavaScript. All right, so now we're gonna focus on that route of changing up the cursor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a div class over here. Of uh, we're, We'll call it cursor. And it's just an empty div, and this is going to serve as the basis of um, the the new cursor or a follow along uh, cursor, as you'll see. Um, so now, what we'll do is we're going to go back here, and we're going to style up our cursor here. So um, we'll leave this here for now. We'll, we'll come back to it in a second. So I'm going to type in cursor for our class. And then we're going to say width is 20 pixels, height as well is 20 pixels. Uh, our border, this is how we're going to choose to style this thing. So it's not going to be like an image, like an SVG, although you could do that as well. Um, but I'm just going to put in one pixel solid. We'll make it white. I'm going to make the background up here too. Um, let's just put dark gray. But at first, I think I even want to, I want it down here. There we go. So we'll save that. We don't see this thing. Oh, we do see it yet. Let me get that right there. So we can see what we're gonna create here up there. And by the way, I think I will just comment that out. There we go. All right, so now let's continue on. We want it to be a circle. So we'll say border radius is 50%. There we go. Now, of course it doesn't follow us yet and we'll get to that in a second. Um, we're gonna put in position absolute and then also i uh, yeah i think we're just going to leave it right there position absolute okay so again nothing seems to have changed too much uh, but this is going to help us uh, position it with top and left properties so now let's come down i uh, at the bottom just before the closing body tag and we're going to add just some javascript and I'll, I'll i'll describe as we're going along so we'll have script tags here for javascript and first we're gonna create a constant of cursor, cursor. and then we'll use document.querySelector to select the class, cursor rather, just like that. Um, next, on the document itself, we're gonna add a event listener, and this is gonna be on mouse move. So when the mouse moves, we pass in E here, uh, which returns the information about the, the mouse event specifically. Um, and then we're going to take our cursor constant and we're going to set an attribute. And there's multiple ways of doing this. So basically what we want to do is um, every time the mouse moves, we want to adjust a style, um, a style attribute. Um, you could also do this through just adjusting a CSS property. Um, but we're going to do this for, through set attribute just to make this um, kind of on one line here. Let me expand this so we have room to see what's happening here. Um, and what we'll do is set multiple 
uh, CSS properties and values, and just that's going to be top and left. Um, we're going to set it to the cursor again. Remember, is that white uh, little circle right here? So we're we're, we're changing the position to to match the position of the cursor pointer based on mouse move. All right. So set attribute. The attribute that we're going to set is the style attribute, which will allow us to change the CSS in line. Um, and then we're going to put in the first uh, value here, or property rather, is going to be top. And so I'm going to put top, and then we're going to pass in our e dot page y. All right. So if you're kind of before I do this, let me um, just show you more specifically what's happening. If we do console log e, we go back to our pro or a project. We get it out here. And we get out the dev console here. Now we see we can have a, if we go to console, we can see all these mouse events that were console logging and constantly come in. Um, if we just take, take a look at this, it returns a bunch of information. But we want, uh, the one that we want is page Y and page X, which will re return the location of uh, the, the cursor on the page. All right, so now what we'll do is, let's get rid of that. And we'll get rid of that. All right, so style, we're setting the top value, which this is why we um, made it position absolute, because you can use top, the, the top property with position absolute. Um, and then we put, we set it to the page Y coordinate. Um, and then we hit plus here. And then remember to put PX here. All right, so this is all CSS property stuff right here. So all you have to think about it that way. Um, and then we'll put a com, uh, no, a, a semicolon inside of here, right there. And then we're gonna put in left. And in there, we're gonna put in basically the same thing. So left E dot page X, and then plus, px just like that all right so now we can see that it follows it around but it doesn't look quite right simply because it's not centered to the, where exactly the center of the mouse pointer so what we can do to fix that is uh, a little bit of math so we know it's 20 pixels by width and height so we can put this wrap this in parentheses and then just put the page y value which is a numerical value minus 10. And I didn't know exactly that this would be the parameter. I mean when I what was I uh, doing this project for the tutorial I experimented and yeah it was just negative you just subtract 10 for both of the values and there you go it's now in the center awesome awesome stuff so it's not too exciting as it is though as it stands so let's continue on um so now what if you wanted to create like a lag like to where it was um you know it doesn't immediately reach it uh that's a common thing that you'll see with some of these um uh, demos here or, or with these custom cursors before we get to that though um i do wanted to show uh you could do this cursor none so now in this case, we don't have a cursor at all. Um, we have a 100% custom cursor like this. Um, I personally think, you know, for you purposes of usability, um, especially how I done it here uh, with this kind of larger circle, it wouldn't make sense. Um, but so I'm just gonna remove that for now here, just uncomment that. So now we have it back. Um, so now let's create like a lag on this. So it's not following it around exactly where the mouse pointer is. So to do that, it's actually very simple. We simply add two properties. There's Again, there's multiple ways to do this. I've seen JavaScript solutions for this, but this seems to be the easiest. All we have to do is put in transition, and we add this, by the way, to our cursor, the cursor um, element itself here. So transition duration will be 200 milliseconds, for instance, um, and transition timing function ease out. So look at this. 
so now it has a nice little lag showing up very cool so um we can even do more you know we can make this we can use this this cursor now like any other regular css properties and we can add animation to it for instance so let's add an animation um specifically to uh the cursor so we'll do animation and we'll do um, we'll call it cursor anim with uh, a 0.5 second animation infinite and it'll alternate between two states all right so we'll put in uh, our keyframes uh, cursor anim we'll go from transform let's make it pulse like in and out so scale it's going to go from one and then our two value the scale will go to um, point maybe seven you don't want to get anything too intense all right so let's save there it goes so now it's kind of pulsating and of course you could do other stuff like uh, you can um, you can use the after selector so cursor after and we can do the same thing with many of this content um, empty content here for this to work we'll put in uh, some of these initial values right here um, again position absolute um, border we'll make it a thicker border 8 pixel solid gray um, border radius that can I type apparently not 50% all right and then um, opacity 0.5 see what it looks like so far yeah so that looks silly like that um, but if you want to get this evened up all you have to do is change the top to negative uh, the, 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 the basically the same pixels or the same size as your border so uh, 8 pixels left negative 8 pixels there we go and then of course if you wanted to you can do animation give it its own animation um, cursor anim 2.5 seconds infinite alternate all right and then we'll just copy this real quick um, we'll say from uh, this time we'll just do 1 to 0.4 just to change something up a little bit different about it there it goes if you want to see it bigger I'll, I'll increase this I'll zoom up on my browser a little bit sweet all right so let's also see about uh, maybe changing something and or doing something with it based on a click event so if you click something or the user clicks something we'll make this change somehow um, so let's go ahead and do that what we'll do is um, we'll create a class um, that gets added Called expand uh, when when it, this will get attached to um, our cursor div and um, when it gets when the user clicks anywhere so we'll do um, animation cursor um, anim 3 and we'll do 0.5 second forwards this one won't um, loop and then we'll put border one pixel solid red so we can change up the appearance of, of different properties here um, so we'll save that let me do that cursor animation 3 real quick change this to 3 and then um, this time we're going to use percentage uh, values so we'll say 0 50 percent and then a hundred percent because I wanted to what I think the effect I'm going to go for is when it user clicks it'll it'll grow things um, a little bit but then shrink it back down so it'll go from one to maybe three to one um, like that yeah uh, we'll also take the opacity to zero on the end to fade it off all right so of course nothing's gonna happen now because expand isn't attached to anything so we'll just simply modify our uh, document here just a bit and all we have to do is add another um, event listener so document add event listener click um, open this up and then we're gonna put um, cursor dot class 
list dot add expand. All right, so now, so we're adding the expand class um, through the class list, class list um, add method there. So now what we need to do is uh, when a person clicks twice, it's simply just going to add expand. It's not going to work again. Um, so I'm going to use a set timeout function. And in here, I'm going to put in a, a cursor dot class list dot remove expand and the duration I believe is five uh, half a second so 0.5 seconds um, and so all we have to do is in here in the second parameter of set timeout is just put 500 so it's going to remove it automatically after 500 milliseconds so there we go very very cool stuff so as you can see there's a lot of interesting things that you can do with this, even a lot more than what I'm just showing here. But uh, this should be a basic rundown of you know how you can use um, different methods of replacing the uh, the cursor, and you know through just CSS alone, the cursor property. Let's take this back to uh, none, and there we go. Um, and also through JavaScript solutions where you have more a lot more control over. Uh, how you're doing things. All right, everyone, hopefully you enjoyed that and you learned something new. Uh, if you did, let me know in the comments. Also answer today's question, which is customizing the cursor, yes or no, should you or should you not do it? Let me know in comments and make sure to subscribe yet yeah, and click the bell notification icon to get notified every time I upload a new tutorial, which is several times a week. All right, see you guys soon, goodbye.